Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 11, titled Blind Spots. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so Supergirl was on last night. This is my review and breakdown for the episode. We're going to be going through it chronologically. There is a lot to break down. This was a very powerful and very hard-hitting episode and it was all about Kelly and I think it was better for that and it really brought up some sort of darker sides that you know I think the show kind of glosses over in terms of being a superhero and not looking at some specific communities and so I thought it was very powerful this episode and I definitely think it's one of the more effective episodes of the season. Okay so starting off we have Nixley who realizes that something has gone wrong slash something is off and so she reminds herself of the events and she does that by rewinding or at least we see that through the episode rewinding through the past two episodes and the rewind ends up with Kelly 24 hours ago and she is there she's talking to Joey on the phone and this is at the point where the on building actually collapses and so she goes and it's basically from the bystanders perspective rather than team Supergirl's perspective from the other side of the building quite literally like the other side and Joey can't breathe and lots of the other people are all in trouble and they're all sent to the hospital and it's quite clear from the start that team Supergirl are so preoccupied with Nixley that they're not caring about those actually in need and is actually quite unheroic and it emphasizes the fact that not even Supergirl is perfect as a hero and as a person despite being the lead hero of National City. Okay, so the councilwoman has gained powers and she uses this experimental drug or something and she basically uses her power in order to make herself better rather than everyone else who is in need and it in turn makes her into this sort of super villain for the episode and she gets Nixie's powers essentially. And all the victims, they have the blue sort of magical light going throughout their veins and their skin. So it's pretty obvious from the start, it has something to do with the councilwoman and her actually having those powers, you know, with her blue glowing eyes. It's definitely draining those people around them and she's willing to do this in order to rebuild this community in her image and she doesn't care about those who are actually in need. So she's the terrible councilwoman, obviously. And so this episode was directed by David Ramsey himself, who plays John Diggle. Obviously this was his final episode in his special kind of contract that he had with the CW where he was directing episodes and he showed up in like all the different shows. And this is the last show that he's showing up in this year. Obviously, he's going to continue. And the end of the episode definitely teases that. So he will be back. No worries about that. But he shows up because James Elson sends him to help out with Kelly. It's a great surprise to see him because he is so welcomed. And John is one of my favorite characters in the whole of the Arrowverse. And seeing him show up gives you such a warming feeling. I guess because he's so familiar and we've known him for literal years, like nearly a decade or so. So yeah, it was great to see Diggle back and he plays a big role in this episode and we'll talk more about him in a bit. But he does reference Oliver Queen and how he was good at seeing the big picture. But sometimes he would miss little things and he would require evidence in order for him to actually be like, Oh, I need to help with this because this is actually important, whereas he was sort of overlooking it, and this is similar to what Supergirl was doing in this episode. And so Diggle and Kelly, at this point, they go to the Ornfield building, which has collapsed, and they find the sort of room where that bomb was a couple of episodes ago, and where Supergirl blew it up, and she didn't realize that she caused more damage than she was actually doing, because she blew up the bomb, and I mean, it wasn't very smart that she just was like, okay, let's heat vision it, why not, it's a bomb. So obviously that caused the radiation to go into the building, the actual structure itself, and therefore the dust, and this affected everyone. And so this is explained just after Team Supergirl run into Diggle and Kelly inside that room, and they're like, what the hell are you doing here? Like, they didn't expect to see them, because I don't think Team Supergirl was taking much notice as to what Kelly was doing, 
and also they didn't know that Diggle was around, so it's quite a shock for them. And so once again, it's very clear that Supergirl isn't listening to Kelly, and same goes for Alex, as Kelly tries to talk to them, but she's pretty much dismissed for most of this episode until she breaks out later in the episode. And so Diggle and Kelly realize that the councilwoman is connected to all of this, and so her security attacks Orlando after this scene, and this is at the point where Kelly shows up as Guardian, protects Orlando, and also Diggle goes after them as they run away and Kelly and Diggle go after them. And so you have this cool badass fight scene and Diggle is beating up these security guards and Kelly is going after the councilwoman who obviously has powers now. And so it was a really great scene and she disappears but Kelly is able to keep one of the strands of her hair. And so this is at the point where she goes back to the tower and reunites with Team Supergirl revealing everything that has been going on and Kelly gets into a confrontation with Team Supergirl because Kelly explains everything that's been happening and how they've overlooked her and not been listening to her and the real problems going on because they have been kind of looking forward to what's going to be happening tomorrow but they're not looking at what's actually happening today that is a big thing about Kelly and what she is talking about and so after this scene, Diggle actually reveals something very important and this is in regards to him being potentially Green Lantern and he reveals to Kelly that he had an opportunity to leave and become a special kind of hero but it would have meant leaving his family. Now this is 100% a reference to him being Green Lantern and let's just quickly skip forward to the end of the episode because Diggle's final words that he say as he leaves the tower is, worlds away. Now, this is 100% them being like, yeah, Green Lantern is coming, it's not happened yet, but it's a big teaser, and this is like the second biggest teaser that we've had since the Flash episode, because the Flash episode was heavy on that, and like, you remember what Cecile said, like, oh, I feel something with inside you, Diggle, and she could tell that something bigger was going on. Well, that's exactly what Diggle teases in this episode. It teases that he's actually going to be going off-world and potentially taking on that special kind of superhero role. But we'll have to wait and see when he next shows up. We don't know if he's coming in the next crossover. We know that he's directing some episodes this year again. But nothing has been confirmed in terms of him showing up as Green Lantern or not. But it's clear that they have plans in the future to bring him back and fully go into this and I believe David Ramsey actually talked about this in an interview we may do an extra video on this sometime later this week but for now let's move on and Kelly talks to Supergirl about focusing on her blind spots and how they were focusing on tomorrow instead of today as I mentioned and Supergirl reveals that she feels very guilty and she realized that she's made a mistake and she wants to listen to Kelly and all of the different problems and actually help out where she is needed rather than just looking at the bigger picture. So despite this not being like 100% about like a superhero show, this is more like kind of like what Black Lightning did where it's very focus driven in terms of what they are trying to aim at. So it's definitely less of a normal Supergirl episode and it's more of a Kelly Olsen episode and there's absolutely nothing wrong about it. It just feels kind of different from what we've had this season. And I think that's one of the reasons why it does stand out as a very strong episode. And there are lots of reasons why it's really good. However, I think Kelly and Diggle are the two core reasons why this episode is so good. Okay, let's move on. So Brainy comes up with a plan to stop the Councilwoman. And at this point, Kelly asks Brainy for his help in creating a new Guardian suit. And it turns out that Brainy's had some ideas that he's been working on for a while in terms of creating a new suit specifically for Kelly and this is obviously the Golden Guardian suit and it's revealed and it looks awesome. I really like it in action. There was a couple of scenes where it was obviously on a green screen as she was standing on a building. It looked very fake. However, I get the idea behind it and I thought it was cool about all these people looking up to a hero that's like them. But, you know, the CGI kind of took away from the impact a little bit but I don't think that's the biggest deal in the world because it was a very impactful couple of scenes. And so Team Supergirl go and take down the councilwoman as they protect the neighborhood from her and Supergirl goes into a proper fight against her and she's able to hold her back whilst Kelly uses some sort of device in her shield to drain her of her magical abilities 
from the fifth dimension and so this is where everyone is healed all the people from the hospital they all come out because they realize oh crap like something's going on out there but actually team supergirl well specifically kelly with the help of supergirl are able to stop the councilwoman and cure all of the people that were in need. And so after the fight, we have Kelly and she goes to talk to Orlando and they hint at his future on the show and potentially him becoming a council person for the community. And it's very likely that they're going to actually go ahead with this because, I mean, it's an overt reference to what his future has to hold. And so there's one final last scene after the Diggle leaving scene, which we talked about, and he actually referenced back lightning in the scene. And he goes off and says to himself, worlds awaits, like I mentioned earlier, 100% meaning that they are leading up to something big and he is potentially going to be taking on that role of being a Green Lantern like it was teased at the end of Arrow's final episode. And I know it's a bit disappointing that we haven't actually seen him become Green Lantern because everyone has been waiting for it and it was teased like it was probably going to happen in this crossover, but I think the wait is going to be worth it because when he's actually revealed as a version of Green Lantern, it's going to be awesome and I'm sure it's going to be in like a big crossover or something, more so than just a couple of individual episodes. So yeah, the final bit of the episode is Kelly and Alex talking and it's very impactful and I thought it was a really great way to end off the episode by sort of reuniting them again because they've been quite distant throughout the episode because of Alex overlooking Kelly's struggles and you know everything that she was dealing with but now they've come to some sort of conclusion about how they're going to live their life going forward. So that's about it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel. Also subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video but for now I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see room.